In this video, I'm going to draw this photo reference of a cactus in bloom, but with a bright white background. And while I do this, I'm going to share with you five actionable tips that you can take to create highly detailed colored pencil drawings on a bright white background in your own work. My first tip that I'm going to share with you is to examine the negative space while you are creating your composition. If you are unfamiliar with the term negative space, then a simple definition is everything that isn't your subject. Here, I have isolated all of the negative space and made it yellow. And I've also eliminated all of the detail in the positive space so that I am just looking at shapes. For a composition, especially a subject on a white background, to work really well, you need some really interesting negative space and you need to be able to clearly and effectively separate your subject from its background. When I look at all three of these photo references side by side, the one furthest to the left of the cactus with the flowers is going to be the best candidate for a white background because it's easy to differentiate the subject of the cactus from the background. And the background in this one is actually making it more confusing and harder to see what's going on. Whereas when I move to the center photo of the passion flowers, those leaves are creating a really important sense of environment to this piece. And when I focus on just the positive space of the flowers, I really am not left with a very interesting shape. For the photo reference of the succulents, which is furthest to the right, I am not really able to take one of these succulents out of the composition because there is so much overlapping. So this one wouldn't be a great candidate for a single succulent on a white background either. There are many different ways for you to study the relationship between the positive and the negative space in your composition. The most immediate way is to just use your imagination. Look at your photo reference and imagine all of the background disappearing. If this is a little too conceptual for you, you could grab a sketchbook and you could do a quick thumbnail sketch where you do a loose drawing of the shape of your subject and you eliminate all the information in the background. But the way that I like to look at this relationship between positive and negative space is to put my photo reference into Photoshop and use the quick selection tool to actually grab my subject and delete the background. This allows me to look at the exact shape and compare the relationships between positive and negative space and identify really quickly if I'm interested in pursuing this composition with a fully detailed drawing on a white background. The second tip that I have for you is to keep your pencil sharp and be precise. Before I began working on this piece, I had decided that it was going to have a bright white background and I knew that I wasn't going to be able to correct mistakes or proportions by adjusting color or detail in the background. With this in mind, I took extra care while I laid out my line drawing. I kept my pencil sharp and I made sure my measurements were precise. It is difficult, even with years of drawing experience, to draw something perfectly on the first attempt. So I incorporated a bit of tracing here and there to make sure everything was in the right place. For this piece, I used the Derwent Light Fast Colored Pencils on Arches Hot Press Watercolor Paper. Because the Light Fast Pencils have a little less wax content than Prismacolors or Luminance Colored Pencils, they maintain a sharper point for a longer time. And this is awesome for keeping the edges crisp and clean because you're not going to have to sharpen quite as often as you would with waxier pencils. Other pencils that would hold a sharp point for a long time would be the Polychromos Colored Pencils by Faber-Castell and the Pablo Colored Pencils by Caran d'Ache. Although sharp pencils are really important along the edges of your subject to maintain that crisp barrier between subject and white background, it is important to keep your pencil sharp in those areas far away from the white as well. Sharp pencils are just better to work into the tooth of the paper than a dull pencil, and this is going to allow you to build up opacity in your subject with control and without damaging the paper. The third tip that I have for you is if you blend with solvent, control it. 
If you are careful, blending with solvent is a great way to work your pencil into the tooth of the paper, and it can speed up your process quite a bit. However, most materials that dissolve colored pencil effectively are slightly toxic, so you need to make sure you are doing this in a safe way. I actually have a video coming out next week that answers just about every question that you might have about working with solvents safely and effectively. If you are watching this video near its release date and you want to make sure that you catch the solvent video next week, be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications. Or if you prefer a reminder straight to your inbox accompanied with helpful art tips, sign up for my weekly newsletter with the link in the notes below. For those areas that are far away from the edge of your subject, you can be a little more loose with your use of solvent, but when you get within about a half an inch of the edge, you need to proceed with caution and control. If you come into these areas with too much solvent on your brush, you may notice that the solvent will bleed out into the white background a bit. Although some of this is unavoidable, you want to make sure that the bleeding is as minimal and as clean as possible. So make sure that you are dipping a small brush into clean solvent and that you are only applying a little bit of solvent at a time to those areas that are closest to that white background. If you do notice a bleed, just leave it alone and let it dry. Clean solvent usually dries clear if it's left alone. My fourth tip for you is to protect the white background. Now, colored pencil is a fairly permanent material, meaning that once you put it down on the surface, it's pretty much there to stay. But it does still have the potential to blend and smudge a bit. To protect your white paper, make sure that your hand is never resting directly on a white part of the paper, especially a part of the paper that is right next to an area that already has colored pencil built up on it. This piece had a really unique composition with most of the white negative space on the left. And because I'm right-handed, I was able to avoid ever resting my hand in those white areas. To further avoid smudging anything with my hand, I made a conscious effort to work from left to right. If you are a lefty, finishing with areas on the right first and then moving towards the left, or exactly opposite what I'm doing, is going to help you to avoid smudging. Now, we don't always get to have a composition that has all the white spaces in the right places. So in these situations, you can protect your white paper by securing a material like tracing paper over the top of your drawing board so that it never has to touch the paper. I have seen several artists tape paper directly over the top of their white background. CJ Hendry, a prominent artist on Instagram, will often post process pictures of her work with this white paper taped around her subject, kind of like a drop cloth. Now, this is definitely going to protect that white paper from pencils dropping on it or from your body as if it rests on top of the paper, if you're working sitting down or something. But there is still going to be that little window of space all the way around your subject matter that you need to be really careful of. You also are going to have to eventually remove this tape. And that is the main reason why I have never tried this method. I am just too scared that removing that tape is going to damage my paper. And then the tens, if not hundreds of hours that I've spent on that color pencil piece are going to deteriorate in value because the paper's damaged. But <laughs> some artists still use this and have great results. And if you wanna try it, what I would recommend you doing is using a tape that is low tack, acid free, and that you're familiar with. And when it comes time to removing the tape, do it very slowly and very gently. If I need to protect my work, I usually opt for a large piece of tracing paper that I actually secure to the edges of my drawing board, not onto my drawing surface or the paper itself. Then I can take this piece of tracing paper and I can move it around so that just the part of my work 
that I am currently working on is exposed and that my hand is resting directly on the tracing paper instead of my colored pencil surface. Before moving on to my fifth and final tip, I wanted to share a little bit of information about the art supplies that I'm using. So the pencils are all the Derwent Lightfast pencils and I love these pencils because they have a really unique oil to wax ratio, which allows them to be very luminous and you're able to build up your opacity while also keeping a very sharp point. So I think that they're really good for these kind of botanical pieces that are high in chroma or really intense color and also very fine detail. They worked great. I can't recommend them enough. And if you're interested in checking them out, I have some links in the notes below. The surface that I'm working on is Arches Hot Press Watercolor Paper, and this is a paper that I have been using for a really long time on lots of different color pencil projects. It's a really versatile paper that's also compatible with wet media, so you can play around with watercolor bases, watercolor pencils, and then follow it up with dry colored pencil layers. If you're interested in that paper as well, again, there's links in the notes below and feel free to reach out and ask me any questions that you have about working with these materials. I have a lot of experience with both of them. I just absolutely love them, can't recommend them enough. And I hope that you are able to give them a try and that you enjoy them too. My fifth tip for you is to clean up your white background with some scotch tape. Now throughout the process, even though you're being as careful as possible, you are going to have some small smudges along the way and you're gonna to wanna to figure out how to clean them up. Did you know that scotch tape can be used to remove small amounts of colored pencil from your paper? It totally can. Now, it doesn't necessarily work as well as a traditional eraser with graphite, but it does lift the colored pencil enough to really clean up and crisp in the edges of your subject on a white background. To remove colored pencil with scotch tape, you're gonna take a small piece, maybe two inches long. You're gonna hold it with both hands and you're going to hover it over the area that you want to lift. Notice that I am not allowing that tape to get into the cactus at all. If it does fall onto the cactus, it's going to remove the colored pencil that I've built up, which is not what I want to do. I only wanna clean up the smudges and the marks around the area in the white space. So I'm very carefully manipulating my tape so that it fits into all of those nooks and crannies and it doesn't touch any of my subject. It's really important to make sure that there's always a corner of the tape that is exposed so you don't lay the entire piece of tape down and then get it stuck. I always make sure that I'm holding onto it still with one hand so that I can remove the tape without having to scratch at the surface or pick it off. And just as a note, I have never had scotch tape remove the paper or damage the paper. It's not sticky enough to do that. It really is only lifting the colored pencil off of the surface. I appreciate that you stopped by and took the time to watch this video. See you next week.